Welcome back to Hot Ross World. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, let's talk about micro switches. I think um, as you saw in the last video, I'll put a clip in between here. You can see where the nitrous is cutting on and off. I went back and looked at the data logger, and I'll try to get more information as we go forward, showing you the plugs and data logger. But what I saw was that you can see the nitrous go off, and then it came back on. Um, first kit came on, then it had, uh, I think I had six tenths of a second to eight tenths of a second in the box, and then it reactivated. Even with that happening, had my, I, I uh, had the same 60 foot as one of my best, and I actually picked up a mile an hour with the new carburetor. So what I did find was this on this guy here. I don't know if you can see. So for people that don't know, my micro switch, this button clicks this. And on my old carburetor, I actually had two buttons, but on the new one, th this actually could happen. So I'm guessing it wiggled, because I was sitting there trying to adjust the idle. As the car got warmer, I was adjusting the screw, and you see I put some Teflon tape. You, normally they have a, a, a spring behind it, so I'll look to maybe make adjustment. But what I did do is I ordered a new micro switch that connects here and in this post here to keep this guy from wiggling and causing me to lose signal so i'm guessing i tapped it or let out the gas a little bit between the one two shift uh not really sure i have to go back and look at that but let off and it probably clicked just enough and then when i pressed it back to the floor it re-engaged but it then took a uh, six tenths of a second to so to eliminate that i'm gonna get my micro switch it's like a boomerang i found it on nitrous outlet so i'm gonna work on that uh, um, I actually have it ordered, so it should be here in the next couple of days, probably midweek. Um, so the second thing I want to do um, is look at, talk about suspension. I've been reading a lot and looking online for suspension, and I think I'm going to put a little more anti-squat in there. In the video, uh, I'll try to slow it down. I'll put a clip in between here. I had a little uh, some anti squat I had some separation but I remember when I did this a while back um, that I only had like a hundred and twenty percent anti squat and looking online I, I think I watched a couple of videos uh, turbo John put up um, I think I need to get my uh, anti squat a little higher so I'm basically gonna take the numbers where they are now without me seeing normally I mean of course with a whole bunch of people around I would take the anti-squat numbers with me sitting in the car so I know where I'm at in the line. But what I figured, wherever it is now, I'm going to plot it out and then I'm going to add 30% to the numbers I'm sitting on now. And it should be 30% better, at least in my thoughts. I, I could be 100% wrong. So that's my goal for today. So uh, sit back. Let me see if I can get under here and get some uh, measurements and then we'll pull up the computer. So uh, hang tight. All right, welcome back to Hot Rise World. So, in order to put this down in baselines, uh, things or a couple numbers I have to have, I have to get this the middle of this boat to the ground, the front boat to the ground, this uh, upper, my uppers. I have the relocation upper, as you can see here. Let me get my light here. Uh, let me hang it so I kind of get it where you can see it, but. I gotta go here and get this boat right here. So this is my upper control arm, as you can see. I have uh, adjustment holes up and the one up, but you gotta be careful when it went up. It was actually hitting the bar, so I got actually got them to cut it out. So I'm more than likely gonna lower the front bar. And then I need the where this control arm mounts. The It's hard to see, but I gotta get this bolt hole boat roll right here the center of that now I got to take a horizontal from basically uh, from this boat to there how long it is 
and then swap it in in the suspension. I am going to get the uh, cam center line. Is, and like I say, all of this is not 100% science, so it's just going to be where I think it is. Um, and try to get some numbers to see where it is. But basically, if you look over here, I have a little bit ways I can go down. So I'm actually going to drop this down a little bit more to get me a little more anti-squat. If you see here, I have like a couple more teeth up there. So I'm going to drop it down a little bit more uh, if it need to be and go from there. So we will see how it goes um, and see where I'm at. But we also have uh, some changes I could do on the, I've been reading. I can actually adjust the, this is compression and this is extension over here or vice versa. I can't remember. I have to go back a little bit. That's what I'm going to do today. So uh, let me see if I can get some numbers and then we'll look at baseline and see where we are and then see what we can do to adjust that out of it. Uh, and we'll go from there. Hang tight. Welcome back to Hot Rods World. I want to take a quick, quick, uh, quick time out and just show you how I'm measuring these guys to get my numbers. So basically what I'm doing is coming to each boat and said go midway of the boat. So when I'm looking at that guy, it looks like it's at a uh, five eighths. Um, like I say, I can't, like I say, these are all like say basic numbers. So I'm looking at about five eighths here kind of tough back and forth so it's right in between but like I say all you're trying to do is get a quick measurement let me just make sure I got it yeah I don't know if you could actually see it's the glare um, but it's almost flat. I guess uh, all right, I wrote all the numbers down yeah but I have five eights seven or five eights so I did that all the way around um, front back and to get that horizontal and uh, I'm going to put a disclaimer. This only works for uh, Mustangs, at least on baseline site. It only works for stock locations. It may work for G bodies who have a similar setup, but I'm not sure. So don't quote me on that. But I'm using the uh, uh, baseline suspension uh, uh, diagram and numbers. So, and then basically I'm going up here to this boat, the second boat, which is my upper mountain spot. And then I'm just going from there to how front and drawing like a horizontal line straight across. And like I say, these numbers, I'm gonna go now, put in the calculator, let's see what we got, and then let's see what we can what we can do. It may be good, I mean, I know they say uh, radio cars, watch a lot of videos, or uh, radio cars like a lot of anti squat to get that lift you see, almost a bulldozer type look. Um, but I'm gonna see, if not, if I can't take it down, these are fairly low. I may have an inch or two down here, but I saw up there, it j the numbers jumped dramatically when I went down an inch. So I I'll see, I might be able to take these lowers down uh, some. It looks like I might have a little bit to go on that guy. If not, I may be able to, I think I, the ears are cut off. I don't want to go any higher than that because it's going to start intersecting it. So let's see. But yeah, because it's bar. Yep. So. I got a little room to go, but let's see what the numbers look like, and then we'll go from there. All right. Welcome back, YouTube. So uh, I did all my numbers uh, just a while ago without me. This is numbers without me in the car, but actually my anti-squat number to see here is actually a, a 158. So I'm not sure I'm, I'm actually going to change that right now. I'm going to just read up on my compression and uh, rebound statistics because right now the car is about a 117 60 foot um, which is pretty good for a heavy car I want to say I'm in the 3100 pound range so it, it moves out pretty good and it barely picks the tire up so uh, right now until I get some more testing I'm these right here numbers help me reassure that uh, I don't need to change it. Like say, if you look up here, um, uh, it says uh, measure, you know, control length is not actually uh, actual length, it's projectile. And uh, he wants to make sure this, this particular diagram is from baseline suspension. So if you have a Fox body, uh, 74 through 2004, 
or a New Edge or SN95, all those chassis platforms can use this baseline suspension. So I plugged in my numbers and this is kind of what I get, which is pretty good, I want to say. Um, most people say I need to be in the 100, 150 percentile range, which I'm at 158. Of course, these numbers are going to go down a little bit when I sit in there. So I could, uh, I'm going to play around with the numbers a little bit to see what happens if I move. Right now, the only thing I could do is really move that I really want to do. I don't have any front. Um, adjustments uh, really have one hole but I looked at the other side of the other side is actually cut um, I can lower this bar bottom bar down so I'm gonna lower that now and see what number that goes up um, and how much I may lower this bottom uh, number down and these are all based on numbers without me having to physically raise the car which I don't I kind of like the staggered look there and that's why we buy the the control arms within those control, control arm mounts for adjustments so we can get the ride we want and then get still get a good anti-squat because if this was factory these numbers would i would have to have a car up and down like a tractor but uh luckily uh these are where i'm at so um right now just want to make a quick video on anti-squat and where my car sits at right now uh, but like i say uh I'll have some more when my part comes in for the uh, activation switch. We'll do a little quick video on that. So comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.